the book of Enoch. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them. The Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. But with the righteous he will make peace, and will protect the elect, and mercy shall be upon them, and they shall all belong to God, and they shall all be prospered, and they shall all be blessed. And he will help them all, and light shall appear unto them, and he will make peace with them. And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones, to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order in each its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold ye the earth, and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last. How steadfast they are, how none of the things upon earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. Behold the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water, and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. Chapter 3 Observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves, except fourteen trees, which do not lose their foliage, but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes. Chapter 4 And again, observe ye the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth, over against it, and you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun. And the earth also burns with growing heat, and so you cannot tread on the earth, or on a rock by reason of its heat. Chapter 5 Observe ye how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. Wherefore give ye heed, and know, with regard to all his works, and recognize how he that liveth for ever hath made them so. And all his works go on thus, from year to year, for ever. And all the tasks which they accomplish for him, and their tasks, change not. But, according as God hath ordained, so is it done. And behold, how the sea and the rivers, in like manner, accomplish and change not their tasks from his commandments. But ye, ye have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of the Lord, but ye have turned away and spoken proud and hard words, with your impure mouths against his greatness. O ye hard-hearted, ye shall find no peace. Therefore shall ye execrate your days, and the years of your life shall perish, and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal execration, and ye shall find no mercy. In those days ye shall make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous, and by you shall all who curse, curse, and all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you, and for you the godless there shall be a curse, and all the godly shall rejoice and there shall be forgiveness of sins, and every mercy, and peace and forbearance. There shall be salvation unto them, a goodly light. And for all of you sinners there shall be no salvation, but on you all shall abide a curse. But for the elect,
there shall be light and joy and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. And then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom, and they shall all live and never again sin, either through ungodliness or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble, and they shall not again transgress, nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their life, and their lives shall be increased in peace, and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. Chapter 6 And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters, and the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Samyaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him, and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon, because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Semyaza, their leader. Arakiba. Ramail. Kokabil, Tamiel, Ramiel, Danel, Ezekiel, Barakijal, Asael, Armaros, Batarel, Ananel, Zakael, Samsapil, Satarel, Turel, Jomjael, Sarael. These are their chiefs of tens. Chapter 7 And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Samyaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armaros the resolving of enchantments. Barakijal taught astrology. Kokobel, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Erekiel, the signs of the earth. Shamsael, the signs of the sun. Sarael, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. Chapter 9 And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said to one another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and God of the ages, the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of the ages. And thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. Thou hast made all things, and power over all things hast thou. And all things are naked and open in thy sight. And thou seest all things, and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel has done. Who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth? and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Samyaza, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, 
and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and they have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now, behold, the souls of those who have died are crying, and making their suit to the gates of heaven. And their lamentations have ascended, and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And thou knowest all things before they come to pass, and thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them. And thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Chapter 10 Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One, spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape, and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel, hand and foot, cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there for ever, and cover his face that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed, and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel said the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, and the children of the watchers, from amongst men, and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days shall they not have, and no request that they, their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go, bind Samyaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women, so as to defile themselves with them in all their uncleanliness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth, till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is for ever and ever is consummated. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire, and to the torment and the prison in which they, be sh they shall be confined for ever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations, and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy for evermore, and then shall all the righteous escape, and they shall live till they beget thousands of children, and all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace. And then shall the whole earth be tilled in righteousness, and shall all be planted with trees and be full of blessing. And all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and they shall plant vines on it. And the vine which they plant thereon shall yield wine in abundance. And as for all the seed which is sown thereon, each measure of it shall bear a thousand. And each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil. And cleanse thou the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all godliness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth, destroy from off the earth. All the children of men shall become righteous, and all nations shall offer adoration, and shall praise me, and all shall worship me. And the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment, and I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation, and for ever. Chapter 11 
And in those days I will open the store chambers of blessing, which are in the heaven, so as to send them down upon the earth, over the work and labor of the children of men. And truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world, and throughout all the generations of men. Chapter 12 Before these things Enoch was hidden, and no one of the children of men knew where he was hidden, and where he abode, and what had become of him. And his activities had to do with the watchers, and his days were with the holy ones. And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty, and the king of the ages. And lo, the watchers called me, and said to me, Enoch, thou scribe of righteousness, go, declare to the watchers of the heaven, who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. And inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity, but mercy and peace shall ye not attain. Chapter 13 And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bonds, and thou shalt not have toleration nor request granted to thee because of the unrighteousness which thou hast taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to men. Then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid, and fear and trembling seized them. And they besought me to draw up a petition for them, that they might find forgiveness, and to read their petition in the presence of the Lord of heaven. For from thenceforward they could not speak with him, nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins, for which they had been condemned. Then I wrote out their petition, and the prayer, in regard to their spirits and their deeds individually, and in regard to their request, that they should have forgiveness and length of days. And I went off and sat down at the waters of Dan, in the land of Dan, to the south of the west of Hermon. I read their petition till I fell asleep, and behold, a dream came to me, and visions fell down upon me, and I saw visions of chastisement, and a voice came bidding me, I tell it to the sons of heaven, and reprimand them. And when I awakened, I came unto them, and they were all sitting, gathered together, weeping in Abel's jail, which is between Lebanon and Senesare, with their faces covered. And I recounted before them all the visions which I had seen in sleep, and I began to speak the words of righteousness, and to reprimand the heavenly watchers. Chapter 14 The Book of the Words of Righteousness, and of the Reprimand of the Eternal Watchers, in accordance with the command of the Holy Great One in that vision. I saw in my sleep what I will now say with a tongue of flesh, with the breath of my mouth, which the Great One has given to men to converse therewith, and to understand with the heart. And he has created and given to man the power of understanding the word of wisdom. So hath he created me also, and given me the power of reprimanding the watchers, the children of heaven. I wrote out your petition, and in my vision it appeared thus, that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity, and that judgment has been finally passed upon you. Yea, your petition will not be granted unto you. And from henceforth you shall not ascend into heaven unto all eternity. And in bonds of the earth the decree has gone forth to bind you for all the days of the world. And that previously you shall have seen the destruction of your beloved sons. And you shall have no pleasure in them, but they shall fall before you by the sword. And your petition on their behalf shall not be granted, nor yet on your own. Even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written, and the vision was shown to me thus. Behold, in the vision clouds invited me, and a mist summoned me, and the course of the stars and the lightnings sped and hastened me, and the winds in the vision caused me to fly, and lifted me upward, and bore me into heaven. And I went in till I drew nigh to a wall which is built of crystals, and surrounded by tongues of fire, and it began to affright me. And I went into the tongues of fire, and drew nigh to a large house which was built of crystals, and the walls of the house were like a tessellated floor made of crystals, and its groundwork was of crystal, 
Its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings, and between them were fiery cherubim, and their heaven was as clear as water. A flaming fire surrounded the walls, and its portals blazed with fire. And I entered into that house, and it was hot as fire, and cold as ice. There were no delights of life therein. Fear covered me, and trembling got hold upon me. And as I quaked and trembled, I fell upon my face, and I beheld a vision. And lo, there was a second house greater than the former. And the entire portal stood open before me, and it was built of flames of fire. And in every respect it so excelled in splendor and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent. And its floor was of fire, and above it were lightnings in the path of the stars, and its ceiling also was flaming fire. And I looked and saw therein a lofty throne. Its appearance was as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun. And there was the vision of cherubim. And from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire, so that I could not look thereon. And the great glory sat thereon, and his raiment shone on more brightly than the sun, and was whiter than any snow. None of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory, and no flesh could behold him. The flaming fire was round about him, and a great fire stood before him, and none around could draw nigh him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, yet he needed no counselor. And the most holy ones who were nigh to him did not leave by, nor depart from him. And until then I had been prostrate on my face, trembling. And the Lord called me with his own mouth, and said to me, Come hither, Enoch, and hear my word. And one of the holy ones came to me, and waked me. And he made me rise up, and approach the door. And I bowed my face downwards. Approach hither, and hear my voice. And go. Say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons? And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you had defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And, as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also do who die and perish, therefore have I given them wives, also that they might impregnate them, and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants, who are produced from the spirits and flesh, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men. And from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger, and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men, and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Chapter 16 From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment, thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless, yea, shall be wholly consummated. And now, as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who had been aforetime in heaven, say to them, 
you have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones. And these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Chapter 17 and they took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished, they appeared as men. And they brought me to the place of darkness, and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries, and the treasuries of the stars, and of the thunder, and in the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows, and their quiver, and a fiery sword, and all the lightnings. And they took me to the living waters, and to the fire of the west, which receives every setting of the sun. And I came to a river of fire, in which the fire flows like water, and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. I saw the great rivers, and came to the great river, and to the great darkness, and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of the darkness of winter, and the place whence all the waters of the deep flow. I saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth, and the mouth of the deep. I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished them with the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the earth, and the firmament of the heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven, and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of the heaven. I saw the winds of heaven, which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of the angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above. And I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. And as for those towards the east, one was of colored stone, and one of pearl, and one of jacinth, and those towards the south of red stone. But the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God, of alabaster, and the summit of the throne was of sapphire. And I saw a flaming fire. And beyond these mountains is a region, the end of the great earth. There the heavens were completed. And I saw a deep abyss with columns of heavenly fire. And among them I saw columns of fire fall, which were beyond measure, alike towards the height and towards the depth. And beyond that abyss... I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above, and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it, and no birds, but it was a waste and horrible place. I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains, and to me, when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This place is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven. And the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in the beginning of their rising, because they did not come forth at their appointed times. And he was wroth with them, and bound them till the time when their guilt should be consummated, even for ten thousand years. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind, and shall lead them astray into sacrificing demons as gods. Here shall they stand, till the day of the great judgment, in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. So that was chapters 14 through 19, chapter 20. And these are the names of the holy angels, who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels, who is over the world and over Tartarus. Raphael, 
one of the holy angels, who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit, he that is set over the best part of mankind, and over chaos. Sadakael, one of the holy angels, who is set over the spirits who sin in the spirit. Gabriel, one of the holy angels, who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Remiel, one of the holy angels, whom God set over those who rise. And I proceeded to where things were chaotic, and I saw there something horrible. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible. And there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it, like great mountains and burning with fire. Then I said, For what sin are they bound, and on what account have they been cast in hither? Then said Uriel, one of the holy angels, who was with me and was chief over them, and said, Enoch, why dost thou ask, and why art thou eager for the truth? These are the number of the stars of heaven which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and are bound here till ten thousand years. The time entailed by their sins are consummated. And from thence I went to another place, which was still more horrible than the former. And I saw a horrible thing, a great fire there which burnt and blazed. And the place was cleft as far as the abyss, being full of great descending columns of fire. Neither its extent nor magnitude could I see, nor could I conjecture. Then I said, How fearful is the place, and how terrible to look upon! Then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and affright? And I answered, Because of this fearful place, and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, This place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. And thence I went to another place. Chapter 22 And thence I went to another place, and he showed me in the west another great and high mountain, and of hard rock. And there was in it four hollow places, deep, and wide, and very smooth. And there were four hollow places in it, deep, and wide, and very smooth. Three of them were dark, and one bright. And there was a fountain of water in its midst. And I said, How smooth are these hollow places, and deep and dark to view! Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels, who was with me, and said unto me, These hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein, yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. And these places have been made to receive them, till the day of their judgment, until their appointed period, till the great judgment comes upon them. I saw the spirit of a dead man making suit, and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit. And I asked Raphael the angel who is with me, and I said unto him, This spirit which maketh suit, who is it whose voice goeth forth and maketh suit to heaven? And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Then I asked regarding it, in all the hollow places, Why is one separated from the other? And he answered me, saying, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And this division has been made for the spirits of the righteous, in which there is the bright spring of water. And this has been made for sinners, when they die and are buried in the earth. And judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirit shall be set apart on this great pain to the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever, and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction, when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and of the transgressors, they shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. Then I blessed the Lord of glory, and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who ruleth for ever. Chapter 23 The Fire That Deals With the Luminaries of Heaven 
From thence I went to another place to the west of the ends of the earth, and I saw a burning fire which ran without resting, and paused not from its course day or night, but ran regularly. And I asked, saying, What is this which rests not? Then Reguel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said unto me, This course of fire which thou hast seen is the fire in the west which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven. And from thence I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night, and I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains, all differing each from the other, and the stones thereof were magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior, three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough ravines, no one of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in height, resembling the seat of a throne. And fragrant trees encircled the throne, and amongst them was a tree such as I have never yet smelt. Neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance, and its leaves and blooms and wood wither not for ever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. Then I said, How beautiful is this tree, and fragrant! and its leaves are fair, and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me, and was their leader. And he said unto me, Enoch, why dost thou ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree? And why dost thou wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the holy great one, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit, when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation for ever. It shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad and into the holy place shall they enter, and its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live a long life on earth, such as thy fathers lived. And in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then blessed I the glory of God, the eternal King, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them and promised to give to them. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree. And there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep and narrow ravine. And it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. And to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former and of small elevation, and a ravine deep and dry between them. And another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. And all the ravines were deep and narrow, being formed of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks, and I marveled at the ravine. Yea, I marveled very much. Then I said, For what object is this blessed land, which is entirely filled with trees, and this accursed valley between? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, This accursed valley is for those who are accursed for ever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the Lord unseemly words, and of his glory speak hard things. Here shall they be gathered together, and here shall be their place of judgment. In the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment, in the presence of the righteous for ever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory the eternal king. In the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them their lot. Then I blessed the Lord of glory, and set forth his glory, and lauded him gloriously. Chapter 28 And thence I went towards the east, into the midst of the mountain range of the desert. And I saw a wilderness, and it was solitary, full of trees and plants, and water gushed forth from above. 
Rushing like a copious watercourse which flowed towards the northwest, it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side. And thence I went to another place in the desert, and approached to the east of this mountain range. And there I saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh. And the trees also were similar to the almond tree. Chapter 30 And beyond these I went afar to the east, and I saw another place, a valley full of water, and therein was a tree, the color of fragrant trees such as the mastic. And on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon, and beyond these I proceeded to the east. And I saw other mountains, and amongst them were groves of trees, and there flowed forth from them nectar, which is named Sarara and Galbanum. And beyond these mountains I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, whereon were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of stacti, being like almond trees, and when one burnt it, it smelled sweeter than any fragrant odor. Chapter 32 And after these fragrant odors, as I looked towards the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper. And thence I went over the summits of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the Erythrean Sea, and went far from it, and passed over the angel Zotiel, and I came to the garden of righteousness. I, and from afar off trees more numerous than I, these trees, and great two trees there, very great, beautiful, and glorious, and magnificent, and the tree of knowledge, whose holy fruit they eat, and no great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like those of the carob tree, and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine, very beautiful and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, How beautiful is the tree, and how attractive is its look! Then Raphael, the holy angel, who was with me, answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which thy father old in years, and thy aged mother, who were before thee, have eaten. And they learnt wisdom, and their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. Chapter 33 and from thence I went to the ends of the earth, and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other. And I saw birds also differing in appearance, and beauty and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth whereon the heaven rests, and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself according to their number and their names, their courses and their positions, and their times and their months, as Uriel, the holy angel who is with me, showed me. He showed all things to me, and wrote them down for me, also their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their companies. Chapter 34 And from thence I went toward the north to the ends of the earth, and there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth. And they blow with violence. Chapter 35 And from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth and saw there three portals of the heaven, open such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. Chapter 36 And from thence I went to the south, to the ends of the earth, and saw there three open portals of the heaven, and thence there came dew, rain, and wind. And from thence I went to the east, to the ends of the heaven, and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open, and small portals above them. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven, and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory. And I continued to bless the Lord of glory, who has wrought great and glorious wonders, to show the greatness of his work to the angels, and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might, and praise the great work of his hands, and bless him forever. Chapter 37 
Section 2, Chapter 37, The Parables The second vision which he saw, the vision of wisdom, which Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, saw. And this is the beginning of the words of wisdom, which I lifted up my voice to speak, and say to those which dwell on earth, Hear ye, men of old time, and see, ye that come after, the words of the Holy One which I will speak before the Lord of Spirits. It were better to declare them only to the men of old time, but even from those that come, after we will not withhold the beginning of wisdom. Till the present day such wisdom has never been given by the Lord of Spirits, as I have received according to my insight, according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits, by whom the lot of eternal life has been given to me. Now three parables were imparted to me, and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to those that dwell on the earth. The first parable. When the congregation of the righteous shall appear, and sinners shall be judged for their sins, and shall be driven from the face of the earth. And when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose elect works hang upon the Lord of Spirits, and light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth. Where then will be the dwelling of the sinners? And where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of Spirits? It had been good for them if they had not been born. When the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed, and the sinners judged, and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect, from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted, and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of Spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. Then shall the kings and the mighty perish, and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. And thenceforward none shall seek for themselves mercy from the Lord of Spirits, for their life is at an end. And it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven, and their seed will become one with the children of men. And in those days Enoch received books of zeal and wrath, and books of disquiet and expulsion. And mercy shall not be accorded to them, saith the Lord of Spirits. And in those days a whirlwind carried me off from the earth, and set me down at the end of the heavens. And there I saw another vision, the dwelling places of the holy, and the resting places of the righteous. Here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels, and their resting places with the holy. And they petitioned and interceded and prayed for the children of men. And righteousness flowed before them as water, and mercy like dew upon the earth. Thus it is amongst them, for ever and ever. And in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith. And I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of Spirits, and righteousness shall prevail in his days. And the righteous and elect shall be without number before him for ever and ever. And all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights, and their mouth shall be full of blessing. And their lips extol the name of the Lord of Spirits, and righteousness before him shall never fail, and uprightness shall never fail before him. There I wished to dwell, and my spirit longed for that dwelling place, and there heretofore hath been my portion. For so it has been established concerning me before the Lord of Spirits. In those days I paced and extolled the name of the Lord of Spirits with blessings and praises, because he hath destined me for blessing and glory according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits. For a long time mine eyes regarded that place, and I blessed him and praised him, saying, Blessed is he, and may he be blessed from the beginning and for evermore and before him there is no ceasing. He knows before the world was created what is forever and what will be from generation unto generation. Those who sleep not bless thee. They stand before thy glory and bless, praise and extol, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits. He filleth the earth with spirits. And here my eyes saw all those who sleep not. They stand before him and bless and say, Blessed be thou, and blessed be the name of the Lord for ever and ever. And my face was changed, for I could no longer behold. And after that I saw thousands of thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand, I saw a multitude beyond number and reckoning, who stood before the Lord of Spirits.
and on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits I saw four presences, different from those that sleep not, and I learnt their names, for the angel that went with me made known to me their names, and showed me all the hidden things. And I heard the voices of those four presences as they uttered praises before the Lord of glory. The first voice blesses the Lord of Spirits for ever and ever. And the second voice I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of Spirits. And the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. After that, I asked the angel of peace who went with me, who showed me everything that is hidden. Who are these four presences which I have seen and whose words I have heard and written down? And he said to me, This first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering, and the second, who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men, is Raphael, and the third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel, and the fourth, who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life, is named Fanuel. And these are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits, and the four voices I heard in those days. And after that I saw all the secrets of the heavens, and how the kingdom is divided, and how the actions of men are weighed in the balance. And there I saw the mansions of the elect, and the mansions of the holy, and mine eyes saw there all the sinners being driven from thence which deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and being dragged off, they could not abide because of the punishment which proceeds from the Lord of Spirits. And there mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightning and of the thunder, and the secrets of the winds, how they are divided to blow over the earth, and the secrets of the clouds and dew. And there I saw from whence they proceed in that place, and from whence they saturate the dusty earth. And there I saw closed chambers out of which the winds are divided, the chamber of the hail and winds, the chamber of the mist, and of the clouds, and the cloud thereof hovers over the earth from the beginning of the world. And I saw the chambers of the sun and moon, whence they proceed and whither they come again, and their glorious return, and how one is superior to the other, and their stately orbit, and how they do not leave their orbit, and they add nothing to their orbit, and they take nothing from it, and they keep faith with each other, in accordance with the oath by which they are bound together. And first the sun goes forth, and traverses his path according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits, and mighty is his name for ever and ever. And after that I saw the hidden and the visible path of the moon, and she accomplishes the course of her path in that place, by day and by night, the one holding a position opposite to the other before the Lord of Spirits. And they give thanks and praise and rest not, for unto them is their thanksgiving rest. For the sun changes oft for a blessing or a curse, and the course of the path of the moon is light to the righteous, and darkness to the sinners in the name of the Lord, who made a separation between the light and the darkness, and divided the spirits of men and strengthen the spirits of the righteous, in the name of his righteousness. For no angel hinders, and no power is able to hinder. For he appoints a judge for them all, and he judges them all before him. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens. Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men, and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels. And unrighteousness went forth from her chambers, whom she sought not she found, and dwelt with them, as rain in a desert, and dew on a thirsty land. And I saw other lightnings in the stars of heaven, and I saw how he called them all by their names, and they hearkened unto him. And I saw how they are weighed in a righteous balance, according to their proportions of light, I saw the width of their spaces and the day of their appearing, and how their revolution produces lightning. And I saw their revolution according to the number of the angels, and how they keep faith with each other, 
and I asked the angel who went with me, who showed me what was hidden, What are these? And he said to me, The Lord of Spirits hath showed thee their parabolic meaning. These are the names of the holy who dwell on the earth, and believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits for ever and ever. Also other phenomena I saw in regard to the lightnings, how some of the stars arise and become lightnings, and cannot part with their new form. And this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Holy Ones and the Lord of Spirits. And into the heaven they shall not ascend, and on the earth they shall not come. Such shall be the lot of the sinners, who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits, who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. On that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory, and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable. And their souls shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones, and those who have called upon my glorious name. Then will I cause mine elect one to dwell among them, and I will transform the heaven, and make it an eternal blessing and light and I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. And I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it, but the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones, and have caused them to dwell before me. But for the sinners there is judgment impending with me, so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth. And there I saw one, who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool, and with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things, concerning that son of man, who he was and whence he was, and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the son of man who hath righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden. Because the Lord of Spirits hath chosen him, and whose lot hath the preeminence before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness for ever. And this Son of Man whom thou hast seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats, and the strong from their thrones, and shall loosen the reins of the strong, and break the teeth of the sinners. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong, and shall fill them with shame, and darkness shall be their dwelling, and worms shall be their bed. And they shall have no hope of rising from their beds, because they do not extol the name of the Lord of Spirits, and raise their hands against the Most High and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it, and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their power rests upon their riches, and their faith is in the gods, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and they persecute the houses of his congregations, and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits, and in those days shall have ascended the prayer of the righteous, and the blood of the righteous from the earth before the Lord of Spirits. In those days the holy ones who dwell above in the heavens shall unite with one voice, and supplicate and pray and praise, and give thanks and bless the name of the Lord of Spirits, on behalf of the blood of the righteous which has been shed, and that the prayer of the righteous may not be in vain before the Lord of Spirits, that judgment may be done unto them, and that they may not have to suffer for ever. In those days I saw the head of days when he seated himself upon the throne of his glory. And the books of the living were opened before him, and all his host which is in heaven above, and his counselors stood before him. And the hearts of the holy were filled with joy, because the number of the righteous had been offered, and the prayer of the righteous had been heard, and the blood of the righteous had been required before the Lord of Spirits. And in that place I saw the fountain of righteousness, which was inexhaustible, and around it were many fountains of wisdom. And all the thirsty drank of them, and were filled with wisdom. And their dwellings were with the righteous, and holy, and elect.
And at that hour that Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits, and his name before the head of days. Yea, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. He shall be a staff to the righteous whereon to stay themselves and not fall. And he shall be the light of the Gentiles, and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him, and will praise and bless and celebrate with song the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason hath he been chosen and hidden before him, before the creation of the world and for evermore. And the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous. For he hath preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness, and have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. For in his name they are saved. And according to his good pleasure hath it been in regard to their life. In these days downcast in countenance shall the kings of the earth have become, and the strong who possess the land because of the works of their hands. For on the day of their anguish and affliction they shall not be able to save themselves, and I will give them over into the hands of mine elect. As straw in the fire, so shall they burn before the face of the holy. As lead in the water shall they sink before the face of the righteous, and no trace of them shall any more be found. And on the day of their affliction there shall be rest on the earth, and before them they shall fall and not rise again. And there shall be no one to take them with his hand and raise them, for they have denied the Lord of Spirits and his anointed. The name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed. For wisdom is poured out like water, and glory faileth not before him for evermore. For he is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness, and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow and have no continuance, because the elect one standeth before the Lord of Spirits, and his glory is for ever and ever, and his might unto all generations. And in him dwells the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit which gives insight, and the spirit of understanding, and of might, and the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness. And he shall judge the secret things, and none shall be able to utter a lying word before him. For he is the elect one before the Lord of Spirits, according to his good pleasure. And in those days a change shall take place for the holy and elect, and the light of days shall abide upon them, and glory and honor shall turn to the holy. On the day of affliction on which evil shall have been treasured up against the sinners, and the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And he will cause the others to witness this, that they may repent and forgo the works of their hands. They shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits, yet through his name shall they be saved. And the Lord of Spirits will have compassion on them, for his compassion is great, and he is righteous also in his judgment. And in the presence of his glory, unrighteousness also shall not maintain itself. At his judgment, the unrepentant shall perish before him. And from henceforth I will have no mercy on them, saith the Lord of Spirits. And in those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it. And Sheol also shall give back that which it has received, and hell shall give back that which it owes. For in those days the elect one shall arise, and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. For the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved. And the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel. For the Lord of spirits hath given them to him, and hath glorified him. And in those days shall the mountains leap like rams, and the hills also shall skip like lambs satisfied with milk. And the faces of all the angels in heaven shall be lighted up with joy. And the earth shall rejoice, and the righteous shall dwell upon it, and the elect shall walk thereon.
And after those days in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is hidden, for I had been carried off in a whirlwind, and they had borne me towards the west, there mine eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be, a mountain of iron, and a mountain of copper, and a mountain of silver, and a mountain of gold, and a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. And I asked the angel who went with me, saying, What things are these which I have seen, and are secret? And he said unto me, All these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed, that he may be potent and mighty on the earth. And that angel of peace answered, saying unto me, Wait a little, and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of spirits. And these mountains which thine eyes have seen, the mountain of iron, and the mountain of copper, and the mountain of silver, and the mountain of gold, and the mountain of soft metal, and the mountain of lead, all these shall be in the presence of the elect one, as wax before the fire. And like the water which streams down from above upon those mountains, and they shall become powerless before his feet. And it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved, either by gold or by silver, and none be able to escape. And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe oneself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall be of no service, and shall not be esteemed, and lead shall not be desired. And all these things shall be denied, and destroyed from the surface of the earth, when the elect one shall appear before the face of the Lord of Spirits. There mine eyes saw a deep valley with open mouths, and all who dwell on the earth and sea and island shall bring to him gifts and presents and tokens of homage, but that deep valley shall not become full. And their hands commit lawless deeds, and the sinners devour all whom they lawlessly oppress. Yet the sinners shall be destroyed before the face of the Lord of Spirits, and they shall be banished from out the face of his earth, and they shall perish for ever and ever. For I saw all the angels of punishment abiding there, and preparing all the instruments of Satan. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, For whom are they preparing these instruments? And he said unto me, They prepare these for the kings and the mighty of this earth, that they may thereby be destroyed. And after this the righteous and elect one shall cause the house of his congregation to appear. Henceforth there shall be no more hindered in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And these mountains shall not stand as the earth before his righteousness, but the hills shall be as a fountain of water, and the righteous shall have rest from the oppression of sinners. And I looked and turned to another part of the earth, and saw there a deep valley with burning fire. And they brought the kings and the mighty, and began to cast them into this deep valley. And there mine eyes saw how they made these their instruments, iron chains of immeasurable weight. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, For whom are these chains being prepared? And he said unto me, These are being prepared for the hosts of Azazel, so that they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation. And they shall cover their jaws with rough stones as the Lord of Spirits commanded. And Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day, and cast them on that day into the burning furnace, that the Lord of Spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan, and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. And in those days shall punishment come from the Lord of Spirits, and he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens and of the fountains which are beneath the earth. And all the waters shall be joined with the waters, that which is above the heavens is the masculine, and the water which is beneath the earth is the feminine. And they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth, and those who dwell under the ends of the heavens. And when they have recognized their unrighteousness which they have wrought on the earth, then by these shall they perish. And after that the head of days repented and said, in vain have I destroyed all who dwell on the earth, and he sware by his great name. Henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth, and I will set a sign in the heaven, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them for ever, so long as heaven is above the earth, and this is in accordance with my command. When I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on the day of tribulation and pain because of this, I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, 
saith God, the Lord of spirits.